Hi everybody, Dan Ullman, Mike Beer, the DRF.com formulator. Race of the day for Friday, June the 9th is race number nine at Belmont Park. It's the grade two New York stakes for fillies and mares traveling a mile and a quarter on the inner turf. As we take a look at the field, I want to remind everybody that our stakes previews for the Thursday and Friday Belmont cards are presented by TVG. And what a surprise, Chad Brown mm. has the two morning line favorites in the grade two New York, the number six C Khaleesi and the number eight Dasita. Head on over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com, download those free Formulator Pass performances, and please follow along with us. Let's start with Dasita. A couple of tough beats in her last two races. I have to admit, I've never been Dasita's biggest fan, yeah. but she's a head and a nose away from coming into this race on a four race win streak for Chad. Yeah, four graded stakes as well, um, including this race last year where she got the better of C. Khaleesi. He had a little bit of a trip in that race, but Desita ran very well that day, so I guess it, it'll it sort of allay any fears that she can't get the mile and a quarter. I think she might be a little better going shorter, but she'll get the mile and a quarter she did last year in this race, and all of her races are good. I thought she ran great last time, Dan. There was not a lot of pace in that race. She may not love cutting the ground either that she got. She just missed. She tried so hard yeah. in the stretch, and she fell short. She was coming off the layup. She was at the mercy of the pace set by Hawksmoor, the number right. five, who's back in here again. Now, I have a feeling that Hawksmoor really appreciated not only having a nice easy yeah, lead, that, but that I, yielding turf course I think really played to this Irish bred's favor. The key to this race could be in the scratches because sassy little Lila, the number nine, is cross-entered at Belmont on Saturday in the just a game. If sassy little Lila's in here, yeah. it could hurt Hawks more because that horse has speed as well. Yeah, if nothing else, it'll take away the trip that she got last time because, I mean, she just walked on the lead and even with that advantage, um, and the cut in the ground, which she seems to really like, she still looked in deep trouble in the stretch. Now, I'll give her a little credit for digging Absolutely. in and holding on. She was dead game in there, but she also had all the best of it, and she was just sort of, you know, she wasn't the horse that I want out of that last race. Chad has the six C. Khaleesi coming off a big win over yielding ground in the Sheepshead Bay. Her seasonal debut. She took down a couple of the horses that she's going to yeah. face in here, but I don't think it's as cut and dry as saying she beat Suffuse last time out. She's superior to Suffuse. That was a fascinating race to watch from a trip standpoint. Yeah, uh, one of them got a really good one, and the other one got let's just say a less than ideal ride um, in the race. And I think it really played, first of all, I think C. really likes when she has some given ground too. I mean, she's at her very best with that, but she wants every bit of this distance and she's run nothing but good races since she got here. And she was impressive last time. I mean, that was a big run she made through the turn. She kept it going through the stretch, but I you know, sort of agree with you here. The difference between her and Suffused based on that last race, it's not as great as it may seem. Looked like Suffused was traveling well down towards the inside and the next thing you know, she's all bottled up and See, Khaleesi, at that point, Arad Ortiz was riding wisely, said, listen, I've got the horse i got to be bottled up. I'm going to go and shuffle this horse out. And the next thing you know, see, Khaleesi was up, up, and away. Graham Motion as the number one kid, Dura, a very lightly raced four-year-old. You can make the argument that we haven't seen her best race yet. Yeah. And she ran quite well in the grade one Jenny Wiley, her first start of the year, when just behind Lady Eli, who, of course, came back to win the Gamely with a 105 buyer. Yeah, I mean, she ran fine in that race. I mean, overall... I thought the trip worked out really well for her. She just couldn't kick with two really good mares in the stretch, and they just got away from her. But she, she ran well in her own right. I like all three of her races that she got here. Um, but she has to stretch out now. And even if you think that she will stretch out, maybe she will, I mean, she's got to do it against three really good older fillies and mares here, who I just feel like might be a little bit better. Yeah, she's that. bred to stretch out, yeah. but you never know, and this is a really tough field. Let's see what the time form pace projector has in store. We've got the five Hawks more in front, and again, the key to this race, does the number nine sassy little Lila run here right. or on Saturday? Because if sassy little Lila's out, all of a sudden, Hawks more is loose again with perhaps Kadura tracking. Yeah, true enough. I mean, it could be another uh, really soft trip here for Hawks more. We'll see if she can take advantage twice in a row. Like Kadura. The nine sassy little Lila is a very lightly raced four-year-old yeah, making her second start off the layup. She ran really well in the American Oaks last year to yeah, close out her three-year-old campaign on New Year's Eve. And she came back with just a nice, solid performance. I'm sure she wasn't completely cranked up. Right. She got a soft trip on the lead, and she scored in the lane. Brad Cox is a fantastic trainer. Yeah, he does. I mean, all, all he does is win races, that guy. I respect this horse. I think she's pretty good. And obviously, she changes the complexion of the race a little bit if she runs here. Um, Bradcast can do no wrong, but I feel like he's found 
I don't know where he's going to run this weekend. He's found two pretty tough spots for this. Wherever he decides to go, they're two tough spots. Should McGahee has the three apple Betty, no match for C. Khaleesi and suffused last time out. But she caught yielding ground. And I wonder if this European import came over here looking yeah. for firm. I wonder, too. I mean, it's at least something that you want to consider with her. I mean, listen, she was no match for those two horses last time. And that's a little that was a little disappointing to me because I actually felt like she was a major contender in that race. Uh, maybe she gets the excuse of the yielding ground. I really liked her first start over here last year. I thought she ran great in the Dowager, even though she didn't win. If she can get back to something like that, I think she could get a piece of this. Kitten's Roar, the number four, is, is fairly consistent in her last four races. You're going to get those buyers between yeah, 95 and 97. She passed a few tired ones last time out in the Jenny Wiley. Uh, from a from a pedigree standpoint, I wouldn't be surprised if she gets this distance. Yeah. We know Michael Maker stretches him out successfully. Yeah, he's one of the guys you don't have to worry about that stuff with. The question with her is, is she good enough in this kind of a field? And I kind of doubt that she is. Mark Henning's done such a great job with the number seven somersault. She's reeled off three consecutive victories, including a win in the grade three Orchid, the first time she stretched out in her most recent start. Now, she couldn't have had an easier setup right. from a pace standpoint in the Orchid, plus she kind of caught a weak field. That was the time to have her, right? I think it was the time to have her. This time, they're going to try it again here, and, and maybe it'll work out for her, but this is a way tougher spot. I'll be surprised if she can beat this field. So many good horses, so many strong contenders in this race, which is also the first half of the $100,000 guaranteed New York Stakes Metropolitan Handicap Daily right. Double. Let's take a look at our top selections. We both think that Suffused was the victim of a questionable ride last time out, yeah. that she is every bit the equal of C. Khaleesi, and that she can turn the tables with a fair pace setup. Yeah, I, I agree. That could be a little bit of an issue for her because they've sort of settled on her being more of a one-run kind of a horse. They take her back and they let her make one run. Um, I don't know what Carmouche was doing last time. I mean, you could see that he was going to get in trouble from, you know, a furlong and a half before he got into it, and he still got into it. It was amazing. I actually give her a little credit for actually cutting into the margin through the stretch because she had no chance in there once Ecclesi took over. And she actually got close to that horse at the end. I thought she ran great again. I love the job Mott's done with her, and she wants to go far. This is the time. Six to one on the morning line for the number two suffused. Mike's going two, eight, six, and three. I'm going two, six, five, and one in the grade two New York Stakes. Friday's DRF.com formulator race of the day. And it has an approximate post time of 514 Eastern. Good luck.